was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Dustin called those bulls in like they were on a string. No, I'm not gonna. It's not what I'm looking for. Just need a little more. <laughs> that was worth 10 years. Dustin! <laughs> That's a good bull elk right there. My dream is to hunt for a living and spend every day that I can in the wild. So I live my adventures through my camera to share them with you. I've never been the poster child and I wasn't the valedictorian. I'm just an everyday farm boy, but I get some of the greatest hunting footage you'll ever see. My name is Cody Robbins and I live to hunt. Every fall in early September, I head out to Alberta to catch the first few days of elk season with Dustin Flundra. Dustin recruits a lucky Alberta resident that has been fortunate enough to draw one of the coveted early season elk permits in the southern part of the province where Dustin calls home. On these trips, there are two birds being whacked with one stone. Number one, who out there doesn't enjoy calling in monster Rocky Mountain elk? Number two, it's a perfect excuse for me to spend some quality time with one of my best pals, Duster. Ranch down here in the southwestern corner of Alberta with my mother. We run 300 and 60 head of uh, Angus cattle and with that branch land and all that stuff comes a whole bunch of elk for a majority of the year and every fall Cody comes out we plan an elk hunt and I run around and try to find an elk hunter that's uh, been lucky enough to draw this tag it usually takes quite a while and this year it was uh, Alan Troutman and he's come out and we're gonna try to get an elk on video. I'm from Lethbridge Alberta I work in the Lethbridge Hospital as a surgeon I also run a few cows up in the forestry. I'm looking forward to being on a hunt with Cody and Dustin here in Southern Alberta on the Shottery Ranch. It's a beautiful place. I've been here before. I know it's covered with wildlife of all kinds and I'm looking forward to an awesome hunt. I've been applying for this tag for nine years. It's one of the premier elk tags to draw in southern Alberta. When I come on this hunt, I'm here as much as anything to enjoy all the wildlife that abounds here in southern Alberta. And it'll just relieve the stress that I take with me in my daily work at the office and uh, will just make me more relaxed for the rest of the year. Alan, Dustin and I circled way around the bull that we spotted at first light in the skyline, trying to get the wind in our favor. After an hour long hike, we collided with the bull as he was making his way back to the heavy cover for the day. That's him. He's 300. No, 
not gonna. It's not what I'm looking for. Just need a little more. As we were locked on the bull above us, a younger, smaller bull appeared right in front of us. Even though he was small, it was awesome to have a bull elk come up so close. Absolutely incredible. Dustin called those bulls in like they were on a string. Live to Hunt with Cody Robbins is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. Prophet River Firearms, your source for the finest firearms. Ten Point Crossbow Technologies, there is no substitute. And by Sugar Creek Taxidermy, award-winning design. When I first zoomed up on this bull, I noticed he was missing part of his right antler. I instantly figured Alan would pass, but as I heard what sounded to be a safety clicking off, I held my camera as steady as I could on the bull. He's only got one horn, hey? Pardon? He's it's okay. Are you sure? Feels good. Okay. Come right to us, we found one. Good shot. Yeah, thanks man. Good shot. Yeah. Do the knuckle stitch <laughs> shot, buddy. Yeah. Shot. Right on, right on. Good job, Dustin. Alan, yeah. how many times in your life have you seen a big old bull elk crumple? Never, oh never like that. Not not under my scope anyway. Seen it on video, but didn't believe it could happen. <laughs> I, I've never seen it in real life. <laughs> that that's a, that's real the life. first that's the first one I've seen fold up and buckle down. Well, we just got our elk on pretty much the last day that we had with Alan to hunt. Right out of the mist. Right out of the out mist. Of the mist. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like not gorillas in the mist, bulls in the mist. Yeah, it's awesome, Alan. Yeah, it's beautiful. Neat, neat bull. You don't break this stuff off with running around just kissing the girls. Yeah. He's, a, he's a scrapper. He's got them all over the place. This guy come walking right out of the mist and heck he was coming right for us and he was looking for a fight looking at him there he's yeah. if it was me and i looked like that i'd probably be running in the opposite direction yeah. and everything but uh we uh we haven't convinced there was ladies around and he was he was coming to meet them yeah he sure was he was looking for love lots of character though i can't get over all his war wounds he's got yeah you know, look, he's got him on his head he's got him on his rump all down his neck they're everywhere he's got a broken horn i mean yeah. As yeah, a lot as, of character. As far as character bull. goes and scrappiness, I don't know if you'll find one. No. Pat got more. No, that's for sure. I'm very happy with this bull, Dustin. It was an awesome hunt. It was. All three days. This portion of Live to Hunt is brought to you by Rosetown Mainline Motors, the king of trucks. 
Hey guys, welcome to Live to Hunt's Tips and Tines. I'm your host, Kelsey Robbins. This week we're featuring Cody's largest archery whitetail to date, a buck he calls Showtime. Live to Hunt's Tips and Tines is brought to you by Buck Score. Scoring your buck has never been easier. Cody had two consecutive years of stealth cam photos of this guy. The first year, he didn't step in front of his cameras until late October. He showed up late, but one thing always stayed steady with this buck, he always showed up in good camera light. Cody focused on him hard and came really close, but no dice the first year. This buck's daylight habits continued on into the following season, as Cody connected with Showtime opening day of archery. So go to the Buck Score website today and submit your best guess to this buck's total inches of antler using the Boone and Crockett scoring system. Now here's Cody on more of the story of this buck and a helpful tip for you guys to connect on your own Showtime buck. We have learned over the years not to get excited over trail cam photos of a new buck in an area until we get daylight photos of him. Once he is coming in in daylight, it's time to set our plans in place. My first sit for Showtime the first year, we had him coming in in daylight and I rushed in on a sketchy wind to try my luck. The buck busted me before I could get a shot and his habits changed from coming in every single day to missing in action the rest of the year. The following summer he was back to daylight photos, coming in like clockwork. This is the picture perfect scenario that we try to create consistent daylight photos of a giant buck, then most importantly, wait for the perfect win before setting up for the thrill every whitetail fanatic lives for. Go to the Buck Score website today to guess Showtime's score, and also to learn more about scoring bucks in trail cam photos. Yesterday at five in the evening, we were sitting beside a big mule deer buck in velvet, and by, Eight in the evening, I was on my way out here to Alberta to hang out with my buddy Duster. And now we're gonna sneak over the hill like Comanches and try and get a great big bull elk. Duster, you got your homework done. I hope so. Another year had passed, and I hadn't seen my old friend since the hunt with Alan. We barely had a chance to ask each other about the weather, and we were heading over the rise, again in search of the big one, living vicariously through another fortunate Alberta resident. This year, Arnold Guthrie and his son Lyle were in the driver's seat. I enjoy hunting elk. I like to get out with my son. That's probably the, the most important thing is that we get out and do our thing together. Lyle and I have, have hunted since he was a little boy, and getting an elk is it's a bonus for us when we do get one. We've been very fortunate over the years. We've hunted in a lot of different areas. And to be down here in this country and, and hunting with Cody and uh, Dustin, I'm looking forward to getting a nice nice bull. Uh, we don't have to get a record bull, but a, a nice, uh, respectable bull would be really nice. Uh, I'm out here hunting with, with my father once again. We've, we've gone out for many, many years. And uh, I love going out with my dad. Uh, my dad's been waiting 10 years to, to get his draw and I've been waiting 10 years. So hopefully next year I'll get my draw and, and Dustin will be good enough to let us come back and Cody hopefully uh, we can come back and, and do this again. back in. It's about five minutes after seven. The sun's gonna set in about 45 minutes. So we're gonna walk right back into where we think these elk are bedded and start calling again. And it's still early, but we're gonna be right between them and where they go and feed. So there's no reason why we couldn't have a big bull come right up to us.
end of night number one. We've heard him, we still haven't seen him. I think you sounded good, bud. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Straight well, down. Straight down, Arnold. Just keep on him in case he gets up. Good Good shot, Arnold. Arnold. Look at the oak. Good shot. Duster. <laughs> that was worth 10 years. Dustin. <laughs> That's a good bull elk right there. Arnold. Good shot. He is down. <laughs> he ain't moving. He's still there. He's... What are you gonna say? He's dead. <laughs> I think we went to the range, eh? <laughs> we always go to the range before we go hunting. First light day two, 10 million cows and the most beautiful bull that's ever walked the earth. And Arnold made an unbelievable shot at a few hundred yards. He's a six. Boy, he's heavy. He's got long main beams, boy. Really long. Good thirds too, really good thirds. That's a, that's a dandy bull right there. Well, I don't know if you guys can tell right now who's got the biggest smile on their face, but <laughs> I'd give anybody here a run for their money, I think. Arnold actually placed his shot right in behind the elk's head. When we walked up to him, I saw a little bit of blood dripping out of his head there, and I thought, holy smokes, he shanked it bad. And he said, that's right where I was aiming. So, Well, not quite. I was off about three inches. <laughs> well, you know what? That's pretty awesome. Worked for me. Well, guys, that, that was a fantastic hunt. I've been out here with Dustin for four different trips since we've shot you know, the, the great big elk in the perfect spot and had everything come together. So it might have felt easy this morning, but it's actually, there's been a lot of work go into it to have this particular moment go down. Well, I was a little worried for a little while because it's been so hot and everything's been brushed up so early and coming out so late that this was, you know, yesterday we ran around and they were in the bush at seven o'clock and they didn't, we didn't even see one last night. We were hearing them the whole time and we were running around like they were ghosts, but, uh, to actually see them in the flesh and get them on the ground is unbelievable. I, you know, waited so long to get the drawn in this in this spot, and for able to come and share it with me is really, really good. That's awesome, guys! Congratulations! Oh, thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Good shooting, my friend. Congratulations! Well, <laughs> a little luck. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that was luck.
Live to Hunt with Cody Robbins is brought to you by Mossy Oak. It's not a passion, it's an obsession. Stealth Cam. It's all about the hunt. Rage and Bowtech. Primos and by Squincher. To order the new Here Be Kings Mule Deer DVD and other merchandise, go to livetohunt.com. Next week's previews, brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. Next week, we're geared up for springtime in Saskatchewan, bear season, waiting patiently over three different hunts for the big one to appear. Marco Pilon of Sugar Creek Taxidermy, his stepdaughter Emily, and I spend the week in the bear cage with the 10-point crossbow. This is Emily's very first hunt, and it turns out to be incredibly special. You don't want to miss this show. 